Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well tutorial. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to use the PHP function array keys. Now this will return all of the array keys or a subset of keys from a given array. Okay, let's dive into the code. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an array and this will have a bunch of colors. So we're going to start by having the variable of colors like so, and we're going to equal that to the array, and the array is going to contain blue, green, let's do black, and let's also do red, like so. Okay, so this is the array that we're going to use, and what I would like to do is return the keys of this array. So this would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So to do that, we would do array underscore keys. Let's take a look at the documentation for array keys. Here you can see that you can supply three parameters to this function call, input, search value, and strict. We're going to be taking a look at all of these in this tutorial. So let's scroll up to the top here, get to the top of this documentation. We can see return all the keys of an array. This is what this function does. We've got a link here to the PHP manual, so do check out that for other examples. And we can see the documentation for the parameters, the first one being the input. This is an array containing keys to return. And then we have search underscore value. If specified, then only keys containing these values are returned. And thirdly, we have strict. Now this is a Boolean. It determines if strict comparison should be used. So if the triple equals should be used during the search and it returns an array of the keys in the input. Now the parameters search value and strict are optional and you can see that they are optional because we have default values, which in this case are both null. So what we can do for the first experiment is just supply the input. Now this will return all of the keys of that input of the array that we are using. So let's go ahead and go back into the code and try that out. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called color keys. And we're going to equal that to the return of the array keys function. In this function call, we're going to supply the parameter of colors. So I'm just going to copy that in here. And like we've done with the other tutorials, I'm going to print this out to the screen. So I'm going to type print pre, and then within the pre tag, I'm going to have a print R. And we're going to supply the variable of color keys. And then for good practice, we're going to close the pre tag. Okay, I'm going to use the PHP local server to spin this up and see what we can get from the browser. I'll put links to in the description below of how you can do that using the command line. So here we have an array and this array contains the values, which are the keys of the array that we supplied. Okay, so we had a colors array and the zero I think was blue and one was another color and so forth. These are the keys of that array. Of course, it is an array itself and therefore it has its own keys that were created. So let's go and see if we can get a subset of the keys. Let's say, for example, I just want to get the key of the color blue. So I want to search for the value of blue and get the corresponding key of that element. Now I would do that by putting in the search value parameter and this will be the value that I want to search for. So in this case, we're going to search for blue. Now this should return an array where the value of the first element is zero because that is the index of this first element in the colors array. So let's go and save this and let's refresh that page. And there we have the zero returned. Now we can also look for multiple cases of the same value. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say we have another value within this colors array and that value will be blue as we've had before. 
So in doing this, we're now going to return two values from the function call array underscore keys. And this is because we have two instances of the search term blue within this array. In fact, what we're going to return is zero because this is the first index for blue and four because this is the last index for blue. So let's go and hit save and then refresh our page. And here we can see we have the two values returned in this array where we have the key of zero and four matching the corresponding search value of blue within the colors array. There is also a third parameter that we can supply. Now this is quite an important parameter because it checks the strictness of the data types within our values. So let's go back to the code and take a look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this code and I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to change colors to items and I'm going to change colors to items there. And I'm also going to change color keys to item keys like so. And we're going to pass that in here. So we've got a, a duplicate of the array above, but we've just changed the variable names. We're going to add some more variables here. So let's say we have a variable of one. Now this is an integer. Let's say we have another variable where it's a string of one. And also let's say we have a variable which is true, which is a Boolean. And we want to get a subset of the array keys where the value is one, like so. This is a string. Now, we're not going to add the third parameter in yet because I want to demonstrate what this does. So before we do this, before I refresh the page, let me just explain what I've done here. So we've got three types of one here. So we've got one being the integer. We have one as a string and this is a Boolean. Now a Boolean is either true or false, which is either one or zero. So what do you think is going to happen when we request to search for a string of one without the strict property set to true? Okay, let's hit save and see what happens. So I'm going to refresh the page and we can see that we have three values returned here, five, six, and seven. These are the keys for the corresponding value that we've searched for. Now we've searched for a string value of one, but we've returned three particular keys here. This will be the integer, this will be the string value, and this will be the Boolean. So why do we have these three returned? Well, it's because by default, array keys does not use strict data type checking. So uh, let's go back to the code and see if we can fix this. To fix this bug and to prevent all three values from being returned, what we need to do is supply the strict property and set that as true. So, the third property here, we're going to supply as true, and my IDE should pick that up as strict, which it does. So that's the search value. This is the strict property. Let's hit save and go back to our browser and refresh the page. And as you can see, we no longer have the additional two keys returned. We only have this one here, which is six. Now, if we go back to the code, we can actually see which one that is. So the sixth key, is this one here, because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now it's this one here and not these two, because we are checking strictly for a string with the value of one. Now, if I was to change that to just be an integer, so let's hit save, this should return five because it should return this one here. So let's save and go back to the page. Okay, let's refresh and we can see that it's turned to five. So you need to be super careful when you're dealing with array keys and make sure the data types are correct. If your application is strictly checking the data types, then you must also strictly check the array values within your application. If you found this video tutorial helpful, then please do let me know. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel because we have all sorts of courses and tutorials coming up in the coming weeks. Also, if you've got any kind of 
coding questions, it doesn't have to be about PHP arrays, it could be about anything at all to do with coding, then please do join the Discord server. It's howtocodewell.net forward slash Discord. And whilst you're there, do take a look at the other courses and tutorials on howtocodewell.net. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Happy coding, everyone. Take care. Bye.